when you have people over big tech, social media platforms and all that can close the mouth of the United States president, they have too much power. They have too much power. And when I was growing up, they would have drug them out by the collar if they had tried to done that. Now, watch this. But when the remnant pushes in to become a majority, it's done through, uh, in the evil way, it's done through subversion. But now, the Lord spoke to me and said, what happens? He said, when the remnant becomes the majority. And he was talking about on God's side. Well, remember the definition of a remnant, a small piece or amount of something that is left from a larger original piece. This nation and, and, and the move of God used to be the biggest majority there was. We, I mean, revival broke out in every state. This nation was founded on God. It was founded on uh, the belief in the worship of Jesus Christ. That's what this nation was founded on. God created Israel because He loved Israel, but God created America because we loved God. And so it used to be the norm. Nobody dared open up anything, and especially liquor stores and stuff in America on a Sunday. We didn't have ball games during church time. I mean, it was a huge thing, man, and this is why we were able to fight like we did in World War I, too, and all of this. Even if we wasn't prepared, we came out on the other side because of God and because this was founded as a Judeo-Christian nation. But now you're looking at a remnant because subversion the, the wicked remnant has become the majority almost. And now, even in the church, you have people that claim to know Jesus and they'll still vote for abortionist. People say, well, you know, uh, Donald Trump is rude. Donald Trump is mean. Okay, really? 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 Joe Biden will sign one thing and kill 345,600 some odd children in the unborn abortion mills the first year in office. How can you say that's God? God's not in that anywhere you look at it. There's no box called right you can put that in. But when you have a Christian people who's been pushed to watch an ungodly television, listening to ungodly music, letting the subversion lies be pumped into their head 24 hours a day, seven days a week, then they become sipping saints until they, the sipping saints become drunken idiots. And then the next thing you know, they're coming in till one pastor sat in his office smoking pot. And when the guest minister came, he asked him, said, is that pot I smell? He said, oh, yeah, I smoked that before I preach it mellows me out some has the remnant that invaded become the majority at that point yes yes that's why you have churches that suddenly develop by the thousands that you can't come in and pray for the sick. You, they take their temperature before they walk through the door. You, you, you can't give out messages in tongues. You can't give out prophetic utterances. The nine gifts of the Spirit are not allowed to operate there. Why? Because the remnant that subverted the nation has become the majority in the nation. Now what happens, what's going to have to happen is the godly remnant is going to have to become the majority again. Amen. That is done through the gifts of the Spirit, the, the leadership of the Holy Ghost, and it's not done outside the written word of the living God. You have to have this as the guide. So when the godly remnant, now listen, people say, and when we start preaching about, oh, Brother Robin, oh, oh, Brother Robin, you know, you, you just a long-haired prophet. You just scream. Yes, because a lot of people are hard of hearing. You know, Smith Wigglesworth, you know, raised, what, 21 people from the dead. There was, he watched a woman and her little dog. She was trying to get on a bus, 
And her little dog wouldn't go back in. The woman didn't want the dog to get hurt. So the woman said, go on home, honey. Go on home, honey. And the little dog just said, <laughs> and just do it like that. And she said, go on home, honey. <laughs> and the woman saw the bus coming. Go on home, honey. <laughs> get. And the dog just took off running. And Smith hollered out and said, that's how you have to talk to the devil. Because he's hard of hearing. You have to yell at him. And so when the remnant, if the remnant's going to become the remnant of the original peace, the original peace of the days of, of Catherine Kuhlman and A.A. A. Allen and William Branham and Jack Cole and Billy Graham and Oral Roberts and Kenneth Hagin and the remnant back when that was the original peace. There's only a remnant left of that now. If you can come into a church service, I don't care if there's 10,000, and the Holy Ghost is not recognized to operate in His magnificent gifts, you've got a country club for the most part. There may be some help getting out to the people, but not a lot. Well, the Holy Ghost can give messages in tongues on a Tuesday night somewhere, and we'll have a small cell, small, small cell groups where he can live. Isn't that something? Small cell groups. They want, and they, they, now they've took the, the creator of the universe and put him in a small cell group. You better watch it. That small cell group liable to take over a church. So we have to begin to, we have to begin to, as the remnant of the original peace, the believers, we have to begin to become the majority again. How do you do it? You start preaching it. You start teaching it. You allow prophecy in your church. You allow, you allow uh, gifts of the Spirit, miracles, healings. You allow these things to operate in your church. And if somebody dances, pastor, don't get put out with them. Dance right along behind them if you need to. Somebody wants to shout, then you just shout. I remember years ago when I was a youth pastor. Can you imagine that? I was a youth pastor. And uh, we had a wild youth group. <laughs> I mean, we had a powerful youth group. And I remember uh, hearing the story then. I think Brother Hagin might have told it. A, a, a man stood up in the congregation at an assembly of God and said, I saw an angel and began to talk about what he saw, what this angel, about this experience. And everybody got all bent out of shape about it. And the elders started saying, now we're concerned. Went to the pastor and said, we're concerned about brother so-and-so seeing this angel and all this happening. In a full gospel church, Brother Hagin used to say, full gospel church. Don't you miss Brother Hagin? He's part of the original piece. And so, so they came and asked the pastor, and the pastor looked at the oldest elder. I think he was in his 90s. He said, what do you think about this brother seeing this angel? And the, the older Believer stood up and said, Brother, it doesn't bother me that he saw an angel. What bothers me is the rest of us are not seeing them. So for the remnant to become the majority again, we've got to start talking about the power of God. We've got to let the forces of hell know that our God is bigger than anything. We've got to let them know that our God is God, and there is no other God beside Him. Communism's not God. Marxism's not God. Riots in the streets are not God. But God is God, and beside Him there is no God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now, let me just give you this right here before we go on any further. I, uh, I know you're waiting. Oh, Brother Robert, you need to be doing something else. No, I don't. I need to be doing this right now. Noah and his family was a remnant. Isn't that right? 
The world had become so subverted by the devil that Noah and his family was a remnant of people that became the majority. Oh, wait a minute. We'll say that again. Noah and his family was a remnant of people that quickly became the majority. Oh, yes, they did. Oh, yes, they did. They became the majority by showing their faith and doing their faith. When the remnant became the majority, they began to build an ark, stock an ark, pitch an ark, tell about the ark, told about what was coming, told about what was about to happen. Though the majority laughed at them, they laughed and mocked them. Noah was a preacher of righteousness, and he showed his faith by he went and got the timbers and started building this boat. He started pitching this boat watertight. He's expecting a flood. He starts stocking the boat with stalls and food and all kinds of systems that the animals can survive and him and his family because he believes it's coming. But yet it's only him and his family. There's only eight, and now there are the remnant preaching to the wicked majority. But the day came when the wicked majority banged on the side of the ark and said, let us in, let us in, let us in, and clawed the front. But the Bible said the Lord had shut the door. And now when the ark landed on Mount Arat in Turkey, when the door opened, the Lord said, now you go forth and you multiply and replenish the earth. Why, Noah? Because you are now the majority. It ought to tell you something. Why was the earth destroyed in Noah's day? It was be not because of God. The Bible didn't say God did it. It said the Lord did it. All capitals, L-O-R-D. This means Yahweh, God in His system of seed and harvest. The enemy pushed the earth to the place. He subverted it to the place. That's why there's four personalities in Revelation 20. The dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan. There is demoralization, destabilization, crisis, and normalization. There's principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. And these three sets of four work together to subvert the earth. And they got it to the point where they, they're all ultimate goal is to destroy man. So what happened was when the earth got its harvest. So what you see going on now in the United States is not a blessing. You're voting for the wrong people. You can't vote for someone who kills babies. You can't vote for someone who creates Marxism, socialism, communism. You can't vote that in because you're playing into the hands of subversion, which the ultimate goal is to destroy the nation and the world. 